Hello everyone, my name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes. Autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions and to create space on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others, with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These topics and discussions provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday. We actually dropped a thought piece this past Sunday, so be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. Now, if it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available on 12 different podcast platforms for your listening leisure, and we provided you with access to the links in the description down below. Now, as is the convention, be sure to subscribe subscribe, hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time you post. And of course, if you like our conversations and you want to keep them going, like, comment, and share this segment. Let's get into it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And today our topic of discussion is education. And on the topic of education, we're going to be talking about the education that starts at home. And our focus of discussion today is really about knowing ourselves. And I think that this is an important conversation because a lot of the times when we think about who we we are, we think about ourselves in abstract terms, but in cases where it comes to like our physical needs, when it comes to our health, when it comes to anything that is documented, that also plays into our own personal education, having a, a sense as to what plays into our understanding of ourselves. And I think that this is a really important conversation because too many of us are going around very ignorant by way of our current health status. We just, you know, if we feel good then we must be good and we let it go when we have it well within our power to get a health check to make sure that we're eating right make sure that we're sleeping right make sure that we're doing everything that we need to maintain our physical sense of well-being and that's what this conversation is really about and i'm having this conversation right now because sometimes for me that education plays into the way that i structure out my day structure out my weeks and also the way that i goal plan i like to goal plan with my physical state of being in mind Mind, and I have to always be mindful. Like I'm always like very cognizant of my body. I think my body is my first child and I take taking care of myself like very seriously. And some of the ways that this has translated is I have done a lot of physical tests. I know what my physical orientation is like. I've had physical confirmation of being like a highly sensitive person. I have physical confirmation by way of just what like normal looks like for me. And I, I don't believe in BMI. I don't believe in all of these indexes that really put health on a comparative scale. I think all of our health and what is healthy is very individual and it's very customizable. And I've been able to build a really solid foundation just by having a really great relationship with previous general practitioners, with my family doctor, dabbling in homeopathy, dabbling in naturopathy, and building a bit of a synergy across all of those different practices to have a, a snapshot of what it is that my body needs to feel healthy. And I think that that's information that plays into 
into how I even understand like if I'm feeling fatigued, like what am I not doing that I know that I should be doing? Or, you know, if I want to do something but I feel like in order to do it, I need to prep myself. Like if I want to body build a little bit more, if I want to work out a little bit more, then what does that translate by way of how many calories I'm taking in? And I think that's really important because also like for me, because I eat fairly clean, a lot of the things that I do eat, even if I eat a lot of it, I'm still sometimes in a calorie deficit. I personally am not a, a fan of counting calories, but because I like movement, I love being physically active, where I start to build up on my physical activity, I, I recognize that I need to just be more cognizant that I'm eating more food because I don't necessarily like to eat fatty food or food that like is high caloric intake, but like low nutritional value. But it's often the flip side, like when you eat food that are like high nutritional value, it's like low in caloric intake, so you have to eat a lot of it. And that can be a bit of a process, but I try to do it with eyes wide open. I try to always be very informed about what it is that my body needs. And I think also when it comes to physical states of being is being accepting and tolerant of all the cycles that our bodies go through. And for me, like I love that I'm very aligned. When it comes to stress, the way that I deal with stress physically is the way that I deal with stress mentally. And I have to be beyond the period that is very stressful for the stress to start to translate and manifest in physical ways. And this is the same like for my emotions. Only when I feel like I've reached a state of personal or psychological safety do I start to really get a sense as to the emotional upheaval that might be taking place. So like I'm fairly regimented in that regard. And I think that when it comes to my body, sometimes I can feel personally defeated when I start getting like aches and pains because I always say to myself, well, I take really good care of my body. I shouldn't feel aches and pains, but obviously, me taking care of my body doesn't negate from my body like needing opportunities of rest. And that's what this conversation is about. It's really about recognizing that when it comes to understanding our bodies, it's also what we don't do. It's what we shouldn't be doing. And I have to always keep that in mind and I want to put that on your radar because I'm goal planning now and I decided I needed to put an emphasis. Like this my physical state of being because I have all these things that I want to do that are going to require physical energy in order to get done. And sometimes Sometimes I really need to be mindful of planning in for like stillness and not just stillness where I'm laying down and you know doing nothing but like stillness that is restorative to my physical body and that is not something I'm like very good at doing because I like doing physical things to feel good. I, I'm not really all that well versed in like physical activities that require very little movement that also feel good, right? Like it's, it's great, like I think like resting is an activity that many people enjoy. I like to feel that rest is a function and food is a function and I want to do it only as much as I need to do it in order to do all of the things that I love to do. But I'm recognizing that my body needs me to just have a higher threshold for both. So I need to like maybe rest a little bit more than I typically would care for. I need to eat a little bit more than I typically would care for just to be able to compensate for all of the additional activity that I want my body to want to do and to also have the fuel and the energy to get done. That is an exercise that is beyond personal will and desire. That's an exercise that I do playing on the information that I know about who I am as a physical being, what my body needs as a physical entity in order for me to continuously do the things that I want to get done. But it also means like being kind to myself and not being critical when my body does experience periods where it just needs additional rest. And this conversation is taking place right now because like right now, for whatever reason, um, my foot uh, I'm having a little bit of like aches and pains in my foot and like to be fair when I think about it like I'm someone who's like I walk with intention I like to feel like I'm drawing energy from the earth every time I take a step so I'm not like a light-footed person when I'm walking I, I walk with a lot of resolve I do make sure that I wear orthopedic shoes or shoes that really support my feet because of the way that I know that I walk I know I'm a bit of a stomper when I walk around but sometimes I just walk too much, right? Like it doesn't really matter that I'm making sure that my ankles are supported or that my feet are supported. Sometimes I just need to walk less, right? Like rest is part of the journey, right? Of self-care, rest and, you know, being mindful of when my body needs to restore, being mindful of my stress cycles also. So being mindful of like, when it is the case that like I'm releasing a lot of stress, sometimes that manifests in physical ways. So aches and pains that I really can't trace down to a specific injury, but it's really just my body like letting go of stress and needing me to rest while these like periods of achiness like 
kind of move along and, and, and go away. So I think that that's really important. So for all of you who are using lots of general information to determine like what it is that you need to be healthy, I'm here to say take a more customized approach. I always take this back to Starbucks where like if you have a very customized Starbucks drink or if there's an order that you have that is very customized to you, that is the way we should treat our health. So for me, homeopathy is super, super important. I pull a lot of what I learned in delving into homeopathy when I was figuring out like why my body wasn't responding well to gluten. I take a lot of that into like what I build as, as, as part of my food repertoire now. And also part of that learning, recognizing that my body will gravitate towards certain foods during certain periods. And I just kind of go with the flow, right? Like I don't think that there is like a food guide that gives you healthy foods that translates across like the whole mass of people. I think a lot of our like family history or genealogy, the foods that like even our ancestors customarily ate really plays into the foods that our body like enjoys eating and the foods that our body really does not like to eat, whether they're conventionally healthy foods or not. So I know that there's a lot of like conventionally healthy foods that I still need to eat in moderation because of my physical orientation. My body doesn't like a lot of those specific kinds of foods. And I also know that there are foods that like could be healthy, but depending on the time of the month, I am completely repelled by those foods, like sensitive to the way they smell. So I think that this alignment, this attunement to your physical body will give you a sense as to what it needs at what point in time, rather than you just turn off your body and focus on external material. I think that there needs to be a fusion of what we know about ourselves because we've done the research, we've done all the blood tests, we've done all the checkups, like we know like what we need to feel good, to be in a good place physically on a day-to-day -day basis. But then we also make a point to tune in and to check in. And if our body is telling us, hey, you need to rest or you need to take it easy or you need to slow down, then we just respect that, right? And, and I am someone like that's been a journey because I'm a mover and a shaker. I'm not really someone who enjoys resting a whole heck of a lot. I mean, I'll do it if I feel fatigued, but even fatigue is a signal like, okay, Rochelle, you need to take your iron, so on and so forth. But I generally plan my life around movement and activity and doing things. And I'm learning that like what my body needs is a balance. It needs me to plan around activity, but it also needs me to plan around inactivity. And the way that it tells me that it needs me to slow down is sometimes through these like physical manifestations that aren't comfortable but tell me hey Rochelle I think it's time for you to like put your feet up you need to rest maybe this is a period where you focus more on reading you focus more on doing things that are like intellectually stimulating opposed to physically demanding right and I think that it's all just a wonderful beautiful cycle and it's part of the journey that we each take on so a lot of people you know they don't recognize that their body is a physical entity that needs their attention or they diminish or devalue the attention that their physical body needs until something goes very wrong and I'm someone who I like to proactively learn about what it is that my body needs so that I can cater to my body's needs in the way that I work out, in the way that I eat, in the way that I sleep, and in the way that I plan the things that I want to do in my life in the quick term, midterm, and long term. And I want to give you that baseline understanding of like, that's how we plan for health, right? That's how we plan and how we can plan where we're not taking our health for granted and having certain things translate in our lives. I think we need to be informed. We need to have our eyes wide open and we need to recognize that there is no one size fits all approach to health, right? Especially physical health. Physical health translates differently for each and every one of us. And even when you know what your baseline is, depending on what you're going through, depending on like what kinds of stressors you have in your life, your body's needs are gonna be different and you have to be tuned into your body to know like, okay, if certain things are taking place at certain periods of time, it needs to translate as X, Y, or Z. And you need to adapt, you need to be agile. And again, like for people like me who like to move and who are movers and shakers and where physical activity is how you feel good, sometimes it's not what you need to do good for yourself. Sometimes what you need is, is quiet, is rest, it's stillness, is to put your feet up, let yourself elevate and not feel bad about the fact that your body's asking you to slow down. So I am someone like sometimes I do feel periods of defeatedness, like I feel defeated when my body is giving me signals that like I need you to slow down. And I start to try to justify why I shouldn't need to slow down, but at the end of the day, if I'm having aches and pains, then it does mean that I need to slow down regardless of how much rest or how little rest I feel like I'm experiencing like the quick or the midterm, because sometimes like, especially when I'm like coming down from like a lot of stress or a lot, if I'm coming down to earth, I'm experiencing a lot of like emotional or mental stress it will translate very physically like once I'm coming down to earth like once that fight or flight is off like a lot of the times like it's just my body giving
giving me like these physical signals that just tell me even still like maybe I just need mental and emotional rest because I've been going hard like intellectually and mentally, emotionally and like my body typically will be on board. Like if I need to be on and going, I can go for a very long time. But like as I start to calm down, then my body will tell me, hey, I need you to rest. And I listen to my body, but I also make a point to take what it is that I know about my body to make sure that my rest is restorative and my rest is actually relaxing and my rest is actually like good for me and it feels good to my body based on what I know my body likes and also what I know my body needs. So I wanted to come here and I want to talk about that. For those of you who like hate going to the doctor, go see a doctor. Find a doctor that you like. I think that that's a relationship that really needs to be one of those relationships of mutual understanding. Like you don't need to like love your doctor, but you need to respect your doctor. You need to feel safe around your doctor. You need to feel like it's okay for you to ask certain questions and be ignorant. And your ignorance isn't going to be met with impatience and with dismissive behavior. Like for me, like, like I had a wonderful family doctor my full adult life until like around pre-COVID. So like I'm pretty solid. Like I know a lot about my physical health because I would take routine checkups. I would do all of the tasks, like everything completely. And here are a few things to note about what makes a really great family doctor or general practitioner. One is they are listeners, right? They listen to you and they also are okay to speak to why they're providing certain recommendations. I am not someone who blindly will listen to someone tell me like you need to do this does not because like this level is saying this it's like I need to know what that level means I need to know all of the different options that I have available to me and I need to know why you think these options are good options for me to follow I like to have informed conversations like anytime I'm interacting with an expert I want to leave feeling like I know a little bit more and I really am not the kind of patient who blindly listens to you because you're an expert if you can't explain the basis of your expertise we're not compatible and I will not see you again so for those of you who feel like, well, you know, like, I'd like to know more about my body, but my GP is fairly impatient and kind of rush through the appointment and I don't know any more or less about myself after that appointment, then it's time to like look for a new doctor who is okay to have that human connection and has that bedside manner it is so important. Also, I am someone who believes that not every medicine gives you the full picture of what translates as physical health. So I am like a huge proponent of homeopathic medicine. I love it. Of naturopathy. I love it. I think it's much more holistic. It's use your body as a full functioning unit and the focus is on health is on promoting health rather than on finding sickness and I think that western medicine is much too focused on taking every piece of information and looking at it through a lens of illness rather than looking at it as through a lens of like personal or individual like orientation right like I don't need every aspect of myself to be like looked at and scrutinized under a lens of illness and I think that is a huge flaw with western medicine so I like to dibble dabble in naturopathic medicine and holistic medicine and homeopathic medicine and again not to completely negate western medicine like I love my GP but my GP needs to show up a certain way for me for me to value that relationship and build on that relationship and then I also do like to do a bit of a network with like a beautiful or wonderful naturopathic doctor so that I can have a holistic approach and have a real understanding as to like what foods my body likes or what things my body likes and you know what kinds of activity do I I need to engage in because of my body's needs rather than like have these general assumptions broadly apply to, to me specifically when I know that in a lot of ways I'm a snowflake. My body needs very specific things and I don't care if people think that that's like high maintenance. I know it to be true just because I've lived in my body for a long time. A lot of these broad brushed ideas or ideals around health like just don't apply to me specifically. And being intentional, being mindful, being very focused, being very curious has helped me really curate a plan that works well for me in maintaining my sense of physical health. And also maintaining that awareness of like physical health is also, again, not just about doing, but about doing less during different periods of time. Like our bodies are not meant to just continuously go. And I need to remind myself of this, that our bodies are meant to also rest, to enjoy rest and have restful periods that are restorative. And I think a restorative rest isn't just when we're sleeping. And I need, and if you have any ideas of restorative rest that takes place when you're awake, I mean, I love to hear them. I'm researching those right now because that needs to be part of my repertoire of 
activity that I plan for in the new year, but I wanted to jump here and have that conversation. Like be informed when it comes to yourself. I think education that starts at home is valuing the education that comes with knowing who you are as a physical being, understanding what health looks like, how health translates for you specifically by way of nutrition, by way of physical activity, physical inactivity, and also by way of just, you know, personal preference and orientation. So that's a conversation for today. So hopefully it was helpful to you. Now before letting you go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page. So definitely be sure to tune in. Now these events are paid events. So if you do see yourself participating in our community on an ongoing basis, then I do suggest that you take a look at one of our package plans. Yes, yeah, so we do offer package plans over and above our live events as well as access to workshops and webinars largely focused on self-mastery over and above those events. So definitely meander over to our website, take a look at the plans that we have available. We're on the road to 1K, so subscribe, join the Game Changer community and be part of the change that you would like to see. And definitely leave a comment down below as how you are mindful and intentional on building the education around your physical health and how that translates for you specifically. I look forward to engaging with you in the comments and in my emails, and I look forward to talking to all of you very soon. We'll talk to you later.